What's up Serpus Squad, Tanner here and I'm back with another Terrarium build. This one is much different than others I've done on the channel thus far and I'm really excited to share it with you. I found this baseball bat display case at a thrift store for $5.99 back in March of 2018. I've been keeping it aside until I came up with the perfect idea and that time has come. In this one I'll show you how I upcycled a standard baseball bat display case into an awesome living wall terrarium. We'll start the build with a baseball bat display case. The beauty of using this as a terrarium enclosure is that it doesn't require any modifications to function properly. It's more or less built like an aquarium with glass and silicone. That said, I want to hang it on the wall in a vertical position and thus it needs adjusted. First and foremost is the hanging hardware. As is their position to hang the case horizontally on the wall. To deal with this, I removed everything to start over from scratch. I made measurements, pre-drilled the holes, and attach the hardware once more. I also cut out two small pieces of glass. These are silicone to the right and left of the case's opening. After allowing the silicone to cure, I scraped off the excess, leaving a seamless look. These will retain water since the container is going to hang vertically. After that, I thoroughly cleaned the glass with rubbing alcohol and a microfiber cloth. This will ensure that the glass is ready for silicone. From there, I got a few pieces of egg crate which were pre-cut to a smaller size. I also got a sheet of cocoa fiber liner that was cut to an appropriate dimension. What I did was trace the outline of the egg crate onto the liner. I cut along these lines to make several openings for the egg crate. Then I covered one side of the cocoa fiber with silicone and globs of hot glue. The hot glue will provide an immediate hold while the silicone cures. This was pressed onto the bottom of the case. The purpose of the cocoa fiber liner is to create a good base for the planes to root into. After that I filled the openings with silicone and positioned the egg crate pieces. Everything was left to sit overnight while the silicone cured. What I've created here is a set of risers and anchor points for a larger piece of egg crate. We use this larger piece as a grid to attach plants and to hold down a layer of sphagnum moss. While on that I poured some dried sphagnum moss into a container. I filled this up with dechlorinated water and worked it into the moss. A layer of moss was placed over top of the cocoa fiber. This will act as a wicking layer. It will stay wet at all times and ensure that the plants are well hydrated. That's important because this setup will primarily be planted with moss. To keep this sphagnum moss in place, I added the large piece of egg crate. I started by lacing all of the risers with zip ties. Then I topped it off with the egg crate and pulled the zip ties through with tweezers. After that I secured all of the ties and removed the excess. Here's a preliminary look at how it will appear in an upright position. Now let's furnish the setup with some spider wood. As is they don't fit into the case very well and they are far too branchy. I went around with my wire cutters and removed most of the small branches. I also tried to make the direction of the branches more defined. I believe that the wood had far too much detail initially and it would have detracted from the rest of the scape. Plus I can use all of the removed branches for nano builds so it's a win-win. Once they were trimmed down, I placed them into the case to ensure I liked the placement. They looked good but the straight cuts on the branches are unnatural. I went back and roughed up the cuts with my wire cutters. Doing so only took a few minutes and is an added detail that will really improve the look of the setup. These also need to be anchored onto the egg crate to ensure they stay put. I first marked a few dots on the wood. Then I drilled through these markings with a small drill bit. Next I cut out segments of stainless steel wire.
Much like the zip ties from earlier, I wove the wire onto the egg crate and through the holes I just drilled. After that I pulled the ends together with needle nose pliers and twisted them to tighten the wire, securing the branches. The excess was cut off. Now then, let's bring this thing to life and get it planted. I'll be using four different mosses including fern moss, hypno moss, thread moss, and sphagnum moss. I'll also be utilizing Ficus pumila cursifolia, Talantia ironantha, and Cryptanthus aculus jade. I started by planting some fern moss. The idea here is to get the moss wedged into all of the spaces between the egg crate. It really doesn't take much. All I'm doing is gently pressing onto the moss to get it into the openings. Long term everything will grow together and onto the background elements. I continued by doing the same for the thread moss. This one is more delicate than fern moss so I primarily placed it in spots around the branches. In doing so, I didn't have to push the moss as far into the egg crate. Next up was the hypno moss. This one was pressed far into the egg crate just like the fern moss. The nice thing about this one is that the color is much different than the others. Lastly was the sphagnum moss. For the time being it gets lost among the other mosses, but long term it will really add some nice texture. Essentially what I did was make a carpet with four different mosses that are all sized differently. The combination creates a harmonious blend of textures that aid in making an interesting look. With the mosses situated, I proceeded to wedge the Talansia and spaces between the branches. I think they help add pops of interest without making the design look too busy. Sometimes that's a look I like to achieve, but I'm going for a more minimal design here. After that I planted two Cryptanthus below the branch. I had three but I felt that two looked better. The idea with these is that they offset the design and create tension. Last but not least was the Ficus Pumula. At this point the background was so built up that all I had to do was plant the roots into the moss. Much like the Talansia, these add extra texture that enhance the aesthetic without making it too busy. After all of that I gave the setup a good spray down to get the plants well hydrated. I also simply used some clear tape to keep the door shut. Long term I had a more permanent mechanism, but I ran out of time for this build. There are a lot of options to choose from like various catches or even something like neodymium magnets. I'll record that when I do and show you at a later time. Part of the reason I made this project was by request of my wife. She wanted me to make something to put in the living room, so that's where I hung it up. I used a paper guide to mark for the holes, drilled them out, pounded in some drywall anchors, screwed in the screws, and hung the terrarium. And there you have it, a baseball bat display case that has been transformed into a beautiful living wall terrarium. I don't know about you, but I think this is a much better use of the case than for a baseball bat. In fact, this may be one of my favorite projects to date. I really enjoy how nice it looks in this space, and I think something like this could help add a pop of interest to just about any room. Paintings are nice, but why not make a living picture to hang up in your house? For those of you wondering, I don't have to artificially light this terrarium as we get a lot of natural light in our living space. I also made sure to hang it up in an area where it would receive the optimal amount. Since it's a closed system, it's not something I'll have to water very frequently. However, since I added Talansia, it needs to be opened every now and again to air out. If they don't take well, then I'll likely replace them with Anubius Nana Petite. Again, I really like how this turned out. Nature is the best art there is, and what better art can we bring into our homes? If something like this seems daunting, then check out some of my other terrarium builds and give it a try. There's a learning curve to everything, but once you know how these things work, it becomes second nature. I'll leave a playlist down in the video description for more. Anyway, let me know what you thought about this one in the comments section. 
This is just one of many living wall projects that I have planned, among other nature related works of art. If you're interested in seeing more like this, then stay tuned. As always, I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one, Serpa Squad. Take care, and peace.